Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully this is going to be a short video. It's going to depend on if I get too long-winded or not. I'm hoping I don't. But this is going to be a follow-up to the last thank you video that I did. And also kind of a show and tell showing some of the stuff that I got at the Rocky Mountain Train Show as I was able to head out for that this year, the spring one. And while I was there, I also picked up some stuff from Rocky Mountain Train Supply. I'm only going to show the end scale stuff in this video. I did end up getting some other things that I'll show in another video, but that is what the focus of this one will be, is mainly the end scale stuff. So to start off with, I finally was able to use the gift card to OVR that Sean McGee had given in Sparky's Christmas giveaway and ended up looking through what they had and as I'm a sucker for kind of the weird or the different, I decided on these three cars here. Granted, the cylindrical ore hopper isn't that weird. It's not anything that we normally see down here in Utah where I'm at. And so it was kind of cool to pick, grab one of those. I was looking at a different one, but ended up you getting this one because I wanted the shorter ore hopper. And then the two center depressed flat cars are Department of Defense flat cars. If you've seen some of my videos earlier that have the nuclear train running through them, you'll have seen these before that have the glow in the dark nuclear flasks sitting on them. I still am planning to do something nuclear with these to add to the nuclear train. But I just don't know yet. I'll end up 3D printing something. So we'll see when that comes. So thanks, Sean. I appreciate it. And then at the show, there were a couple of big purchases that I made. Kind of went over budget a little bit, but that would be okay. The first was I had actually been looking at this New York Central GP7 before I went out to the show. And the reason for it is I have the 20th Century Limited set from Kato. And while I do like the E8s, I also like the black and gray paint scheme of the GP7 here. And figured that this would be something cool to have that would be different to run that train when I'm running it every now and then, or even run you know a shorter train with it. So, found it, was a good price, and was kind of going back and forth on it, and as I was getting ready to leave, I decided, you know, I need to get this, or else I'm going to be frustrated, and, you know, be cursing myself, and so, obviously, I ended up getting it, and the reason I knew that I'd be cursing myself, and be frustrated and irritated, was I'd also been looking at another engine at a local show and was going back and forth on it. And by the time I decided, yeah, let's get it for the same reasons, run trains with it that are different. And the vendor had already sold it. So when I came across the Amtrak Pepsi Can Dash 8 at the show, I hummed and hawed on it a little bit, and then same thing, I was getting ready to leave, realized, you know, I was already kind of frustrated with myself not getting it earlier, so went and grabbed it. And surprisingly, I also saw a lot of the or hoppers there at the show and I had been really looking at this paint scheme and decided you know what I just need to do it and grabbed it it wasn't too bad of a price either everything was pretty decently priced so it was kind of easy to justify that way and then I ended up grabbing two more cabooses 
for more, whatever you want to call it. Um, I really want to keep, use them for my operations, even though it technically wouldn't probably be used. They are still using, at least Union Pacific is using this type of caboose for switch platforms or shoving platforms or just the place for the crew to sit or stand as they're moving around. And while that's kind of what I'm emulating with my layout, I figured I'd better grab, better grab one just to have a variety that people could grab. This is a Blueford shop one. And I also have, you know, another one of theirs. And so I knew that it would be really good and so snagged it. And then this caboose is one of the new Rapido ones. And I was debating on if I got it or not. Um, and had passed on it a couple of times. Saw, saw him at the show and figured, yeah, why not? And I do like the lights that are on it. I wish that they were a little bit brighter. You can see them here on the end. And there's that side off. But, you know, overall it looks cool. I even like the, that if you're looking at it, you can see the, oh, excuse me, the light inside of it. I think it just kind of adds that there's somebody in there. It was kind of a pain to get the cupola off first when I needed to get the batteries in there. But now that I've gotten them out once, they're pretty easy to go back and forth and or get it off again to put batteries in. Um, I must have left it on <laughs> at one point as when I came back down to turn it on to film this, the lights were off and they weren't working. Swapped out the batteries and it's good to go. So there is that that I got at the show and from Sean. As far as Rocky Mountain Train Supply, I didn't get a whole lot. Um, I ended up just getting a couple of decoders. If you've seen some of my videos with layout tours of my layout, you'll have seen this executive unit sitting with the shell up and off can even see how much dust is on it. I haven't even gotten to clean it off yet. But swapped the decoder in that. So now that's running again. There was a decoder in there, but I had cannibalized it for another locomotive. I think the Mayor's D40. I can't remember. But then I snagged another one so that I could get... 4015 running since I do have 4014 now and so that's really all that there is so I've kept this relatively short I'm happy with that um, sorry it isn't anything too special but I'm trying to get some other modules done because I don't know how to just stop and it may be a problem but I'm working on a couple of other modules and I wanted to get some videos done up beforehand so that I could edit them and not be worrying about them for later. Have a couple on deck. Um, the other thing I'll show is, I just saw this and I'll do it real quick. I ended up getting this as a gift and it's a Bachman Durango Silverton set. The cars are still in the box. But the reason it's kind of torn apart is I've seen that it's really easy to add decoders to them. And since I'm running DCC, I'm going to do that. So that's where we're at. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you again, Sean. I appreciate the you know giving that you did. And with that, we'll end this video, and we'll see everybody in the next one.